Open your Bibles quickly, 1 Peter 4, verse 1. 1 Peter 4, verse 1. It says here, therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh. How did Christ suffer? In the flesh. I mean, all sins that people committed today and wrongdoings that they commit is in the flesh. So the flesh profits nothing. Do not keep yourself busy with the things of the flesh, but of the things of faith. Keep yourself busy with things of eternal value. When you keep yourself busy with things of eternal value, Satan doesn't like you, but don't worry. The heavens is backing you. Give Jesus a hand. Okay? You keep yourself busy with things of eternal value. Let fleshly things flee from you. Amen. What is the flesh? The flesh is not the flesh and blood which you see here, but it's the sinful nature which operate in the flesh, which is actually Satan's nature, which Adam received from Satan when he bowed his knee to him and gave away his right to rule and reign. Amen? So Jesus had to come in the flesh. That's why he, he suffered in the flesh. Amen? He came with the same body like mine. He also had sin in that body, I tell you a secret. But he never gave in to that sin. He never committed one sin, although sin was in his flesh. He never gave in to his flesh. And the Bible says he condemned sin in the flesh. Now you can imagine. His body also screamed to sin. And Satan used his own body against him. But he never gave in. He was a father pleaser. Give God a hand. That is what's making Jesus so special. He had a body like mine. There was no difference between his body and my body. Zero difference. The same sinful desires I had, he also had. As a young man of age 30, you know what your body wants to do. Full of sin. The sinful nature, the fleshly nature is the sinful nature within the flesh. Now Jesus had to suffer in the flesh, not only on the cross, but his whole life was a warfare against sin and death. So the Bible says he overcame sin and death and how on our behalf. So that when we believe in him, we receive the same, we receive grace to also overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I need to tell you that, and if you don't like it, I'll tell you again, I'll give you scripture. Ye who knew no sin, Became sin. Give him a hand. If you know sin, it means that you have married sin. So now he who didn't know sin. The Bible says Adam knew his wife and they begot a son. Now he who knew no sin became sin. I mean, he didn't marry sin. He didn't love sin. He became sin on your behalf. He received a body like yours. He was born from the womb of a woman, which also had a sinful body. And he came into the world with a body like yours, but he never gave in to the desires of that body. Give God, give God a hand for Jesus. Okay, now listen to this. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh. How did he suffer in the flesh? Well, on the cross, but before the cross. He suffered his whole life. He never gave in to sin. You know, it's, it's easy to say yes to sin, but it's another story to say no to sin. And Jesus didn't do it in another man's grace. We, we live the life that we live in the grace that is available to us in Jesus, but Jesus worked out his own righteousness. Awesome, huh? So the Bible says he cried with loud cries to the one who could save him from death. So how are you saved from your sin now? By fighting your sin? Uh -uh. by having faith in the one who has conquered your sin. Give God a hand for him. How will you get rid of your sin? Well, by focusing on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, and forget your sin. Give God a hand. Amen. Say to God, don't be so conscious of sin and the devil. Don't be so sin conscious, but be Jesus conscious. Look unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. Amen? He is the author of your faith and he's the perfecter of your faith. How will you get rid of your sin? By looking unto Jesus. What do we call that? Very, very uncomplicated faith. If you look unto Jesus as a solution, that is called faith. 
Don't think faith is believing because the devil also believes in his shivers in fear. So you look unto Jesus as your solution. You're an alcoholic. Who can save you from that? The Bible says no drunkard will enter the kingdom of heaven. He will go to hell. <gasps> You're in trouble, man. My Bible is clear. A drunkard will not enter heaven. He will go to hell. Who will deliver such a man? Paul said, not Paul, the Holy Spirit in him said, praise be to Jesus. Amen. Who came to set me free from the law of sin and death. Now let me make it very clear. The homosexual will not go into heaven. The drunkard will not see heaven. He will see hell. Let me not lie to you. But Jesus got a solution. He said, believe in me. I conquered sin on your behalf. If you believe in me, I will take your addiction away. How will you get rid of your addiction? By fighting your addiction? The more you're going to fight it, the more you're going to, you, you're going to fail. The more you fight sin, the more you will fail. The only way to be safe is by looking unto Jesus who has conquered that sin on your behalf. How do you know, Pastor? You don't know what I'm going through. I'm smoking. I cannot get rid of it. Pastor, do you know how I feel? I also smoked. And I also use alcohol. I know the feeling, man. But I had faith in Jesus to deliver me. And he did so. And after that, I prayed for many people. A very simple prayer of faith. And they got free from alcoholism, which all the centers they went, went to could not save them from. I mean, that's castle carriers, that's the new one there at Vitrefi, and I don't know what else. The biggest alcoholics in this, in this town or city have come and sit in our living rooms and we prayed a simple prayer of faith for them. They got tired of their sin. A simple prayer of faith has set them free because our faith is in Jesus the Christ who has conquered death and hell on our behalf so that we can look unto him and receive the greatest of grace that we need to conquer. And I tell you, anyone can be saved and can be free. The worst homosexual can be free. The worst drunkard and drug addict can be free. The worst Satanist, if he's willing, can be free. But most of the time they're not willing. They love their devil. This Jesus paid the price for you. He carried your shame. Come on now, what a shame it is to be addicted to something you cannot leave. Some people are chewing their nails. It's as addictive as drinking liquor. You get them. You got no nails. They eat their own fingers, man. Come on, you're not, you're not allowed to eat human flesh. It's as addictive as alcoholism. Some people pull out their hair. One after the other. You get these women, they are bold. They pull all their hair out. Why? You know why? Because they are rebels. They don't want to submit to their men. And that demon in them pull out all their hair because their hair is a covering and a sign of their submission. Others, they eat. Shuk, 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 and they put the finger in the mouth. And bring it all out again. And they look very skinny, but they eat themselves to a still stand. That's addictive to food. Jesus came to set you free from that shame. Give him a hand. Amen. Now you need to arm yourself with the same attitude. Amen. God is helping those who want to help themselves. He cannot help a person who doesn't want to help himself. 
If a person like you smoking, how can God help him? These things are destructive. Destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. And don't let people fool you with that. 